So hello and welcome to my presentation on exporting ADA software to Python and Julia. So in essence, uh, I would like to tell my experiences with the GPR build, uh, the project manager, the project manager of the GRU ADA compiler, to export uh, software, ADA software. So. Um, the motivation is that I have a large library of software that I would like to export to a more um, commonly used um, current environment. Um, I will say something about the interface uh, development. So the interface development that can be divided in two types. Um, the easiest type is when the ADA software remains in complete control, but actually the most useful interfaces also give control to the other software that is going to apply. So at the very end of this talk, I'm going to say something very briefly about my application. Uh, the most important lesson here is that don't wait uh, till you have close to a million lines of software to start using uh, a project manager. And I have prepared uh, some dedicated GitHub repository uh, that is a standalone, uh, that contains standalone um, code. Okay, so um, when one exports uh, ADA software, uh, you want to make uh, the build process as simple as possible uh, because it's highly likely that uh, the client, which I will not call the other software, might not be quite so familiar with your software. Uh, the other purpose is that you would like to export uh, all the functionality that you have as an ADA programmer to programmers in other languages. Um, so, my application domain is mathematical software, and I should definitely mention SageMat, which is a very large open source uh, mathematical software system. And um, my activities are actually motivated mainly by SageMat. Um, SageMat has as its notebook, as its interface, uh, the JuPyter notebook, uh, where Julia where JuPyter stands for Julia, Python, R, and many others. Um, so if you have ever used a computer algebra package such as Mathematica or Maple, uh, you may be familiar with a notebook interface. The main importance about JuPyter is that it is not tied to any particular system or programming language. Now, my talk is mainly interested for uh, intended for programmers. Uh, so there are also other interfaces uh, to my software which only require the executable. So here one expects that one is still able to build and to compile. Uh, so what is the uh, main principle in the way I would like to propose to do interface uh, design is that uh, C is kind of the least common multiple of uh, programming languages. Uh, so if you have a good C interface, then the other languages will actually, it will not be that difficult to make uh, interfaces to your software because both Python and Julia interface actually well uh, with C code. Um, so, and the main point of all this is that the build process can be made automatic. Um, so, um, what we actually also want is that it is platform independent. When we talk about a shared object file, it's a .so file on Linux, a .dll file on Windows, and a .dilib file on Mac. Uh, so, the single build script will actually work on all three platforms. Uh, so this is the 
main advantage over make files. Uh, so make files uh, tend to be uh, system and platform dependent. Um, okay, so GPR built um, the 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 package manager uh, supports actually uh, Ada, C, and C plus plus as languages. Um, okay, uh, so I could immediately hop to my application, but I think it's probably better that we look at a toy example uh, where we think of uh, swapping the characters in strings. Um, uh, if you can work with strings, and here if you see the low level uh, representation of strings, then you can actually also work with arrays of numerical data. Um, on this slide, I also want to uh, distinguish between the two types of interfaces where you have an interface where main uh, is in control, so there's still an ADA main that regulates the reading, the writing, and of course also the processing. If a C program has control, there is an interface procedure where the C program calls that interface procedure whenever needed, whenever there is an action for which it requires the interface package. Here's how this can go. In ADA, we have a package swap that initializes uh, the data. So it initializes the package with the given string. Then it does it, and then uh, the string is returned. Now the interface routine call swap will be called by C. Um, so, and it is, uh, so it's very good to have actually a verbose option whenever you design something like this so you can track uh, what is actually really happening. But the important thing is also that uh, all the arguments are actually typed. Uh, when I was presenting my interface uh, once to uh, another programmer, why don't you void everything? Why don't you pass a pointer to void? So that would be the typical... Uh, C way of thinking, but I like typing. So you can actually still uh, have the the typed control. So where you pass the identification number of what kind of action you want to do, the data you want the uh, action to be happening upon. Here it is just a, a pointer to uh, sequence of integers, the size of the data. Uh, so you can still control, keep the, the strong typing. Here is the C interface. Uh, so of course, testing, testing, testing is important. So we have a standalone C interface that actually tests the jobs. So job number zero is initializing, job number one is doing it, and job number two is retrieving the swapped word. Uh, the ADA init and ADA final are optional if later on, if the interface is automatically initialized. So this is the main program in C. Here is now building the um, executable, and actually three executables. Uh, so there is the hello world, there is the main, and then there is the C test program. So this works on all three programs. So this is a program to build uh, executables. Then there are a library uh, projects. Um, so the code for the library project is a little bit more involved. One has to define the interface. So instead of the main programs, one has now actually the call swap sitting in there. Uh, there are the switches. And actually, the minus L ADA uh, is something for which I couldn't find help in the user's guide of GPR build, uh, for which I actually needed uh, the internet for a Stack Overflow suggestion. Okay, so this is this is demo lib. Uh, perhaps the demo, perhaps I can do actually this GPR build uh, demo lib GPR. So that will compile everything. And now I can actually go to my Julia folder and execute the Julia co code, call ADA swap job. 
programs. And that will execute uh, the corresponding swap, but it's actually now the Julia code uh, commanding the action. So let me very briefly indicate uh, here how the Julia code works. Uh, it looks ugly, uh, I admit that, but uh, here is the key point. Uh, I executed this on a Windows computer. The same code, the same Julia code, actually works on Linux, works on Mac as well, Mac Intel. Uh, so Julia, in, in a way, has a very interesting CC call feature that allows to call uh, functions in a shared object. Uh, so here the ADA call swap. So I will not drag you through the syntax, uh, but it's actually passing uh, a word as a sequence of integers. Uh, so you see it printed at the demonstration there. Okay, Python is actually a little bit more complicated. Uh, so you have to do some C programming or C++ programming where you do the um, extension module where one defines the extension module so you can then import what I have called here the lib demo um, uh, the main point is that this can also be compiled without a make file uh, but then actually you do python setup.py build and that actually will compile the extension object. Critically here is that you give the extra objects, uh, the lib demo uh, that is compiled with the GPR build. Um, and I must confess that I could only get this to work for now on 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 a Linux computer. So there is still some 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 issues here. Uh, but if you so the, the the main point and the main result of this presentation is that you can extend you can export your ADA software without having to use uh, make files both to Python and both to Julia. Okay, so now two more minutes about the application. Um, so uh, it's all polynomial system. So written actually before uh, the time of GPR build. Um, so I'm a latecomer to GPR build. So the main lesson learned now is that if you have uh, multiple targets and if you have multiple test procedures, and certainly if you link also other software in this. So here my software contains also a substantial C++ package. Uh, there is a Python interface, which I still have to extend uh, to Python and uh, to, to, for Windows. Uh, that's also a work in progress here. But the main result is that now with the CC call, there is a lib uh, PHC pack shared object also built with uh, GPR build that can be used to a much more efficient uh, um, interface uh, to the ADA software from within Julia, then just calling an executable, which we developed uh, last summer. Okay, last slide, some pointers. Um, so there is the PHC pack source code distribution where you can see for a very large software system with mixed language uh, uh, components in there, how the lib PHC pack is defined and is built. Um, if you are new to GPR build, uh, then I would recommend that you look into the uh, toy example uh, that actually contains all the demo code uh, for this talk. So I thank you for your interest in this work. So we are in the questions and answers time. Thank you, Jan, for your presentation. And we have already a few questions. Uh, the first one, or the most important one, is how did the idea of writing mathematical software in ADA got started? So the starting on the software started 30 years ago. Uh, so uh, 
in that time and still it is uh, writing large software packages ada seems to be a very good uh, a very good choice is phc pack um, a large software package um, yes uh, so i get close to a million lines of software oh. Uh, so actually, uh, my idea for bundling everything was that in academia, you write papers. And uh, if you are, say, on your third paper, you may want to wonder whether you can use your techniques from your first paper. So it was actually, for me, the main goal of PHC pack was to have all those algorithms that I developed, have them still available say five, 10, 20 years later. That's the main point. Okay. Um, we have another question. Wasn't including GPR built in your workflow too painful? Um, it was painful, but then also because of the design mistakes that I made. Uh, so uh, one of the most common design mistakes, if you are integrating, let's say, C++ uh, software and ADA software together would be not to think about naming conventions. If you build a library, for example, you cannot have two different GCD, greatest common divisor functions. So yes, uh, it was painful, but I was confronted with all my design mistakes of the past. So in a way, the software is now a lot cleaner. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question reads, what do users of PHC Pack use? The Julia Python interfaces or ADA directly? Uh, I would say neither. So most of my users uh, directly use the executable that is available from my website. Uh, so uh, the fact that uh, executables are there are fine. Uh, so there are Python users. Uh, so uh, Julia is still under development and is still too 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 new to use. Uh, but the Python interface is used, and also uh, the purpose of this talk was also to make the build process of the Python interface a lot more convenient. Uh, so there have been sporadic users of the Python interface, uh, but the main users actually are running the executable code and might not be even aware that it is written in ADA. So you would say that the vast majority of users just use the ADA binary directly? Yes, uh, they use the ADA binary. That's it. OK, uh, we have another top question. Do you intend to continue with ADA for further development of PHC pack, or are you considering other languages? This comes from Dirk Kranist. Uh, well, uh, I like the term language agnostic computing. So users of PHC pack are not tied to one particular language, but I'm still building or I'm still putting in original algorithms directly coded into ADA. Uh, so the Julia and the Python is mainly to make uh, my users who are often mathematicians, who are not programmers, who are scientists, they can use whatever interface they like. Okay. Uh, another question from Maxim. Is it hard to exchange real Unicode strings instead of integers? Oh, um, yeah. So in my world, all the data are actually numeric. Uh, I'm using strings as kind of the universal type of uh, serialization of the code, uh, of the of the objects. So if your software can interface with strings, then they can interface with any object almost. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think that this, uh, strings, uh, so the data we work with are either polynomial representations, uh, so like you would see in a computer algebra package, or uh, numerical vectors. Okay. Um, another question is, why did you go with ADA over Fortran? 
Oh, uh, at the time when I started, uh, Fortran was quite limited. Uh, so we are talking 30 years ago. Uh, so I think that back then Fortran 90 was coming up. Uh, but in terms of expressiveness, in terms of flexibility, Ada was uh, definitely, and I think that still, uh, I think in terms of popularity, Ada and Fortran are a bit on par, uh, but Fortran definitely is more a niche. Uh, so I think in scientific computing, it is probably the standard, but Ada has a lot more advantages as far as software engineering goes. Okay, uh, another question uh, from Fred Paraka. Do your users know that everything inside is Ada and do they care? Uh, actually, they most likely do not know. Uh, so what they care is that they can get a good answer out of this. Uh, so and 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 also the most advanced, uh, the most feature that they like is a black box solver. So they often do not even care about the algorithms that are in there. Um, okay, um, I think there are no more questions that have not been asked. Oh, yes, a new one. I presume you use PHCPAC in your teaching. Do you use Ada in that context as well? Yes. Uh, so in a way, this talk was kind of meant uh, for future generations of students uh, and current generations who will be looking into uh, more into Ada. So uh, I do have lectures on high level uh, Palo programming, and Ada fits very well in there. Yeah, well, now that you mentioned parallel programming, I suppose you mean tasks, not the new yeah. parallel keyword that's coming up. No, I mean tasks, yes. Okay. And uh, f uh, from my side, I would like to thank you a lot for this uh, presentation. I'm the creator of Ada Scheme Interop, and using GPR build was the biggest uh, struggle that I had not creating the actual code, but uh, dealing with GPR build. So I really thank you for for this presentation. And okay. another question, uh, maybe since you are dealing with mathematical software, and I suppose it does a lot of computations, uh, is the performance good? Yes. Uh, so um, the performance is okay. Uh, so one has to do often some specific weeks if you really want uh, the closest performance. Uh, but performance is indeed quite good, yes. Okay, and one last question. We have less than 50 seconds. Ludovic Brenta asks, what interfaces, interfaces beside Python and Julia do your users use? Um, I think these are all the MATLAB interface. MATLAB is still alive and kicking. So uh, the, the, the MATLAB interface is being used. And does that also get generated from the GPR library? Or? No, no. Uh, so the MATLAB interface is going through the binary. OK. Well, we are coming to the end of the Q&A. Thank you, Jan, for your presentation. If the viewers have any more questions, this room will now be opened in a few seconds. Uh, be patient. And thank you. You're welcome.